What, what if Canada, Canada and, the USA and the USA united, united Canada... which I feel in the future is not that far-fetched. There's already been several ideas of a North American Union one day. With Canada's resources and Mexico's population, this would be a really strong team. The U.S. as the 51st state would make the U.S. the largest country in the world, with an area of almost yes, 20 million. Yes, we would finally pass up Russia just in terms of land area, because remember Canada is in second place, but they're nowhere near first place. So combining our two countries would bring us to number one. Russia is just so mad. Massive. And to think 30 years ago, they were even bigger as the Soviet Union. Kilometers, ...surpassing even Russia. However, Canada's contribution, other than its extensive land area, would be Definitely. negligible. Its population of oh. 38 million... Yeah, that's why I said Mexico would be contributing a lot in terms of population. Technically, this Canadian population is just equivalent to California. That's it. ...count for just around 10% of the total population of the new union. And its yeah. GDP of $2 trillion would make up only 7.7% wow. of Wait, the total... That's still GDP a nice of increase. Of $26 trillion of the new U.S. That's in fact, California nice would be more significant to the U.S. than Canada in every aspect except for its land yep. area. Yeah, we've heard this story many times. It, it is... It is true. But again, Canada got a lot of resources. 7% is nothing to scoff at. The Canadians themselves probably don't want this. I probably shouldn't be pushing this idea. I'm just saying. Nevertheless, the U.S. would gain access to the Arctic region, yeah, reducing that, that Russia's was also, dominance over it. And remember, there's more and more of these trade routes that are opening because of climate change. These northern sea routes that are opening up will be very interesting. But Here's if the, the U.S. and Mexico, and Mexico formed a single, a single country. country. Well, if United States decides to annex Mexico, it would dramatically extend the border southward. Solve uh... Well, yes, obviously. I, f I say that obviously, but I think it's an important thing to note just because I understand everyone's not a, aren't all map nerds like me. The U.S. border crisis, as it will become one of the most populous and that culturally I have diverse heard countries that globally. If we take a look at its it economy, you can see that it would already be the richest country in the world with the combined GDP of $25 trillion. Well, yes, the U.S. is the richest country in the world. Anything we add to that is just going to make it even bigger. U.S. GDP is currently $25 trillion. Mexico would not be adding too much, but neither would Canada at $2.1 trillion. amount of money would make the country more rich than any country in the world, as the U.S. I mean, was already the richest country okay, in the world. Okay, I'm glad they added the that. It of already Mexico was. will increase its GDP by 5.65%. The total land oh, area. Oh, wow. Five? Okay, again, 7% from Canada, 5% from Mexico? Again, I'm not advocating for this to happen. I'm just saying this is an interesting idea. <laughs> I feel like people are going to think that I, I want this. I'm just saying. Total land area of the United States of North America is approximately 4.5 million it square miles. It wouldn't increase. Making it the second largest country Mexico in the world Mexico is by a land very area. big country. It wouldn't increase our land area, at, like getting Canada becoming the first country in the world with the most land area. But Mexico's size is still nothing to scoff at. It's the world's 13th largest country by area. Larger than Canada and China, but smaller than Russia. It Dude, would have yeah, a population still of almost 457 Russia. million people. 457 million. That's because Mexico is contributing 125 million. It's a lot of extra people, especially as we face like demographic issues. Radically increasing the population by 38%. Finally, its military with 1.5 million total personnel would be bigger than the military of India, France, and Germany. Well, I mean, that's again, <laughs> obvious. The U.S. I think already has a military bigger than India. Well, oh, it, I think if you're just talking about people like soldiers, pure soldiers, by military spending, we're beating like the the next like five countries combined while still remaining behind of China's two million total yeah, personnel. Yeah, see they're talking soldiers, personnel. According to this, Mexico has the 34th strongest military. What Might as well finish Canada, off the video US with an Mexico overall together, what if all three of country. us joined well, the that would uh, well joined the, it's a weird acronym but automatically make the North American Union the most powerful country in the entire world. Well, definitely. If we take a look at its economy Easily. you can see that it would be the richest country in the world yes. with the GDP but again, of 30 trillion already dollars. Like that. As the US is already Dang. the richest country in the world. GDP 30 trillion trillion. Wow. This would be politically pretty messy. I don't know how something like this, I mean, maybe it could function like the European Union, but I don't know. World ...with a GDP of $25 trillion. The total land area of the North American Union would be approximately 20 million square miles, which would make yeah. it the largest country in the world by land area, as Canada and U.S. are already the second and third largest country oh, in the world. I'm glad that they're adding and this combining part. the three countries would make it even larger than Russia. For comparison, it, yeah, it would be 35 times the larger Canada than part. France. It would have 35. a population of almost 500 million people, which means wow. that it would be the third most populous country. Yeah, it comes in a little bit under 500 million, but... Yeah, so there's different things that the... Different countries would contribute. Like I said, I mean, Canada has a bunch of 
land, lots of resources. Mexico has a bunch of population. Find India and China. There'd be a lot of people that would need to start learning Spanish. Probably be the capital, as it's already the capital of U.S. With a military budget of eight hundred billion dollars. Probably, and because it's also they might move the capital. The U.S. might need to move the capital to closer to to Mexico, maybe Texas. But you also still want to be somewhat close to Canada and their population. Have the strongest military in the world, and its military with one point seven million active duty personnel would be similar in size as the Indian military. Again, politically, this would be a mess, though. There'd be two massive population centers, obviously one in the East Coast, and then Mexico City would be the biggest North American Union city, even bigger than New York and LA. There's like 15 million people that live here. As you can see, Canada doesn't have a whole lot of people up there, but still. It'd be interesting to add these big populations in Quebec, Montreal, Toronto, to the overall like megapolis that we got going on here. But obviously all this way easier said than done. Very nice North American Union video, and very nice what if the US and just Canada combined by map marvels. If what if Germans, Germans and Russians, and Russians switched, places. switched places? Firstly regarding World War II, if Germany occupied- oh, okay. Well, I guess with this like uh, made up scenario, we can make them switch places at any point in history because the world wouldn't even be close to the same if we had them switch places 2,000 years ago. Which is location, it likely wouldn't have invaded Europe as there would have been ample land in Asia to share hmm. with Japan. However, let's consider today's world. Yeah. If modern Germany were located here. Okay, there's a lot to break down there, but I think I overall would agree with that, that the no-no Germans would not be forced to go to war with all of Europe. They were obviously smashed inside of this continent, so that was their only choice. But if they had Soviet Union territory, then yeah, they probably would have just both split China in half, then eventually gone down after towards India. Maybe they would have gone after minor powers in Eastern Europe. Then again, a no-no Germany that was bordering in Imperial Japan, they would have problems. They only allied to because of convenience. They weren't neighbors. They had similar enemies. Remember only a few decades before World War II, there was the Russo-Japanese War where these two countries went at it. So definitely the Austrian painter probably would have have some problems with the Japanese Empire. Imagine those two people going to war. Okay, let's but consider let's consider world. 2024. If modern Germany were located here, it would have utilized all of Russia's resources for its manufacturing Definitely. industry instead of simply selling them like Russia does. This would make Germany the world's strongest manufacturer with a GDP yeah. exceeding tens of trillions. Again, this is a hard thought experiment because there's so many other things that, you know, to consider. But definitely Russia has insane amount of resources. The problem with Russia is they do not have the greatest GDP. Germany, that's like a quarter of their size has doubled their economy. Those hardworking Germans. Central Europe, Russia would probably just become like these three European countries. Wealthy, with a mediocre military, loyal to the United States, and boasting in tourism. Yeah, I guess. Probably, I, I guess. I guarantee you, though, the U.S. would not like this Germany. There would pretty much be like a similar sort of Cold War situation. We'd have issues for sure. Our world, Austrian painter. This world, Mongolian painter. Yeah, I think Poland still suffers the same results. Very nice map, lad, as always. Speaking of which, how about when Germany fought Russia not in World War II? This is World War One. So we've seen... Okay, it's really weird. This is World War One, right? Yes, World War One by map in a nutshell. I thought I was hearing somebody else's voice for a second whenever I hear a German speaking voice and well, a map like this. I, I, yeah. All right, so obviously the Russians have the manpower. If you really punch in enough there, you can see the old imperial German flags. No, 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 German symbols yet. You can also see the Russian Empire flags. This is right before they were going to turn into the Soviet Union. So Russia's going to lose this because of all the chaos that was happening on the outside and internally. And uh, Germany's going to set up a bunch of puppet states. Ooh, look at this. Bulgaria crushing down here. Romania just trying their best to remain neutral. Oh man, okay, so there's Austrian hungry forces as well. Let's not count out them. So a ton of them that are defending the southern part of the front, and it's obviously the Germans that are handling the northern part. The rest of the Entente, the British, the French, they were back in the west. They weren't really able to help out too much in the east. So this is still 1916, so they're going to be forced to peace out pretty soon here. Bam, they did get Romania in on their side, but uh, obviously get immediately encircled. Actually, interesting to see World War One not just fighting trench warfare. Of course, we always focus on trench warfare, but there seemed to be a lot more movement happening here. This is 1917. Will they so show the Soviet uprisings that happened kind of in the background? Oh man, oh, they landed in modern day Estonia. Is this Finland? Finland just got their independence. And there it is. Okay, so the Russians were forced to get out. It's 1918. There's The Russian Civil War has begun. Interesting, this blue area. Are they going to crush that down? 
and it's too late because back in the West, Germany was going to lose. Yeah, very big difference between the Western Front and the Eastern Front during World War One. I. <laughs> I love how Romania joined the war and immediately got owned. Why did they do that? So it's actually kind of funny because, like I said, the Western Front doesn't move all that much. It's really the Eastern Front that does a whole lot of movement, and then people join here and there. It's literally like no move. Finally, Italy joins in, but that front doesn't move a much. Germany actually has to shift divisions away from the east so they can go attack here. This is around the time the Russian Civil War was beginning. And then, bam, there's new puppet, uh, German puppet government set up all over here. And by this point, Germany was just suffering too much from the inside. And they were going to pay dearly for that. A whole lot of war operations and uh, well they would come back for World War II. Why China has of all people very in China odd live east of this line. population well, density. Inhabit this western We've portion. talked about this, this before. Side is only I mean partly just access to the sea. A lot of people just want I think there's like an innate human instinct to live by the ocean. That's why beachfront property always costs so much. Home to 70 million people which might seem like a lot until you realize that just part across it, this line you'll find it. Part of it is also ge geography. The Tibetan plateau very difficult to live on. Total of more than 1.3 billion people, which for comparison is yes, almost four times the population of the United States. I mean, the U.S. also has, it's funny, the U.S. also has population density kind of like this, where most people are on the east. Part of that is just how our country was discovered. Everyone started coming east coast first and then slowly had to make their way out towards the west. Only home to 70 million people, Jeez. which might seem like a lot until you I mean, realize it is a just lot. across this line, you'll find a total of more yeah. than 1.3 billion people. But China has people, a ton of people in general. for comparison is almost four times the population of the United United States. The reasons yeah, for this population insane. divide can all be attributed to China's geography. You see, thousands of years all ago geography? in ancient China, civilization was mainly centered around these two rivers, the Yangtze and the Yellow River, which provided this. This is also going to tell you why China has had so many civil wars. Factoring in the plentiful rain and the warm climate year-round, these are essentially the perfect conditions for humans to live in. Fast forwarding thousands of years, like that. you can start to see how so many people ended up here. On the contrary, the eastern side of China is home to some of the driest deserts Very on the mountainous. planet, mainly because the Himalaya's mountain Giant range desert. acts as a barrier, blocking all monsoons from the south from making their way into China. Furthermore, the harsh cold air Similar coming to from Central Siberia Asia. shifts the temperatures of this region far beyond what can sustain a growing population. As always, it kind of all comes down to back to geography. That's why it's so important to know this stuff. Thank you, Reed Schultz Geo. Please go subscribe to all these channels. And big thanks to my patrons this month. Drew, je suis ton père de retour avec le lait. Regarde de Douchebaggins. Amateur archaeology. Connor Pavlov. Ich kann ohne Dresch Stimme nicht schlafen. Frederick Henry Hedlock. Inquisitor Series. The Beautiful. Megan Underwood, John Kansas, Kansas Kiri Lewis, 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 L